everyone and welcome back to Animation Pilgrimage where Sean and I take a look at every single theatrically released animated film in chronological order. I am Tenille. I'm Sean and today we are in 1973 and we are looking at Ralph Bakshi's Heavy Traffic. Second film. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Alright, so it's Ralph Bakshi again. If you were here for our thoughts on uh, Fritz the Cat, um, you'll probably be aware that there needs to be a content warning here at the beginning of this video because, mm -hmm. yeah, there's adult themes in this film. Um, yep. Hard to... Mm, we'll just say adult adult content because there's like a whole bunch of stuff so if there's anything uh, you if you're a you baby see, go or that might trouble you go all right anyway i don't think we're going to be talking about this for too long because i honestly don't have too much more to say about this that isn't the same things that i already said about fritz the cat this one just kind of washed over me it happened I don't think I was terribly pleased with anything that happened, and then it was over. I want to say that it's better than Fritz the Cat, but the content inside this film is so uncomfortable to watch for no good reason, and just is generally unpleasant. Mm-hmm that I don't know that it is better than Fritz the Cat. I don't I, think it is. I think it's a better story and like it's better constructed. No. But like... I, I feel like the story in Fritz the Cat is better told. Mm-hmm. But like, I, I don't know. All right, here's it's the a plot. Lot, it's a lot of semantics. You can make a lot of arguments for, for which one is better. Either way, I still think they're trash and not very good mm -hmm. and not really worth revisiting. Here's the other plot Other than synopsis. as like a, a blip back into history. Mm -hmm. So a live action man plays pinball. Mm -hmm. He loses at pinball. He destroys the machine. The movie ends. <laughs> no, the pinball... Okay, so the, this guy's playing pinball, and the pinball machine is supposed to be like a metaphor for his life as oh, a yeah. underground uh, comic artist. This and is just the story of Ralph Bakshi again, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's kind of... It's just Ralph Bakshi. Uh-huh, it's sort of semi-autobiographical, so of course our main character isn't someone who's going to really grow and change. They're not really presented in a sympathetic light either, he's just like a dude. He just exists. He lives in the inner city, he's got... An Italian mafioso dad and a Catholic mom, and they're Jewish. Con J Jewish. Why did I say Catholic? It's definitely Jewish. Uh, because she says stuff about Catholic people, so that's probably what's stuck in your head. Okay. Either way, they hate each other, they fight, they try to kill each other. Lots of marital abuse there. Mm -hmm. uh, dude is just an artist. Uh, he hangs out with a bunch of different people. He shoves a girl off of a uh, uh, roof. Um, He's a virgin. Ha 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 ha, how funny. How funny. His dad tries to get him to sleep with a large Portuguese woman. Ha 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 ha, it's funny because she's large. I don't know. There's... There's a lot of really uncomfortable content in this film. There like, is really, some... Like, really, really yeah. uncomfortable. Like, there's a person in drag... Mm -hmm. They're either drag or transgender, I don't know. The movie doesn't decide what they are and doesn't really seem to care. They are hitting on a dude that beats the crap out of them. They act like <sighs> this turns the trans slash person in drag person on. on and, and that's then, just highly uncomfortable. Uh, I don't like it. And then there's like the quote unquote best character of the film, Carol, who's mm -hmm. like cool but she's also so sexualized throughout the film that you're just like i wish you were in a better movie mm -hmm. she's like the main character's 
black girlfriend, except not girlfriend, partner in crime, I don't know. They never really establish what they are, and they, that's kind of, po that kind of the point, I guess. Uh -huh. And she's working at a bar and being stalked by this guy who doesn't have any legs, so he wheels around, and so that's the reason she's with Michael, our main character guy in the first place, is that she's trying to have an excuse to stay away from this guy mm -hmm. in the movie. stalking her, and it's like... I, it just goes all over the place, and... And then they commit crimes? Yeah, they commit a lot of crimes. Like... Murder being the main one. Mm-hmm. And then the stalker guy shows up and kills Michael after he gets paid by Michael's dad. Mm-hmm. Because, okay, <sighs> so I think what was going on there is the dad is super heckin' racist mm -hmm. and doesn't want his son dating a black girl, and so he wanted this guy to shoot the girl, but the dude obviously wanted to shoot Michael because he's in love with the girl. Mm -hmm. But like once Michael gets shot in the head and dies, we get taken out and realize it was all just in the game of pinball. And then he walks outside and sees live action Cheryl. Carol. Carol. Why am I saying Cheryl? I don't know. Oh, you're bad with names. I am. <laughs> Continue. Um, live action girlfriend and she's like I don't know you piss off and stuff mm -hmm. but then he somehow wins her over in the end and the movie ends with them dancing yeah also I just want to say fucking cowards not having them kiss at the end <laughs> like am I wrong I guess I, I like I I say that with a little bit of like a questioning myself because like on one hand I don't know that they're actually Dating? I don't think they are. They're just like friends, but it feels so weird that they just like stand there and dance with each other for a really long time and then nothing else happens to kind of like bookend it. And like if you're really going to be like an edgy film or something, it seems like ending off with a kiss is a final like way to wrap things up or something. Yeah. I don't know. There's a lot of other stuff that happens in here, and it a lot of it feels relatively pointless and just kind of crass and coarse and edgy. uncomfortable just edgy to be... Edgy for edgy's sake. Uh-huh. Like, it feels like Ralph Bakshi is writing about his growing up in the inner city and then just dialing it up to 11 or more mm -hmm. just for the hell of it. Just for the sake of being real, man. And it's like... I'm gonna show violence and boobs. Lots and lots of boobs. Cool, but you're not really saying anything about it. Like... No, like, what was the point of this movie? Dude wants to make bad comics, but also not sell out. And then he wants to move out to L.A., but not, like, do anything about it. And then he gets shot in the head for no reason. Yeah. That was what, that was technically the plot. And then there's just a whole lot of other racist and sexist and... Just generally uncomfortable stuff all throughout thrown this. thrown in there, yeah. Cool, great. Uh, so, history time. Mm -hmm. This movie was a financial success. People were super excited to see what Ralph Bakshi would do after Fritz the Cat. Okay, yep, I could see that. <laughs> um, but this whole movie was kind of plagued with a whole lot of the same production woes as Fritz the Cat that we talked about before. Um, Steve Krantz made bank off of Fritz the Cat and didn't give Ralph Bakshi any of that money. Cool. And then Ralph Bakshi's like, hey, I think you've ripped me off. And Krantz is like, nah. And so Ralph Bakshi goes around and talks to a whole bunch of other directors and goes, yeah, you definitely ripped me off. And then he starts talking to other people about what he wants his next movie to be after Heavy Traffic. And okay. then doesn't talk to Krantz about it. And the tension in the studio gets so bad that Krantz locked him 
out of the studio for like a few days and then like wiretapped his phone because he was so paranoid about Ralph Bakshi going on to like another producer or whatever. Oh my god, what the fuck? What a bunch of miserableness that was. Just... why? But also, Fritz the Cat absolutely funded this project because this was the project Ralph Bakshi wanted to make uh, before Fritz the Cat, but nobody would... Give him money. Give him the money or the time because he was a an unproved director, had never directed anything in his life. Mm -hmm. Trying then, to do something that no one's done before. Yeah, and then uh, Fritz the Cat was very successful, so, you know, he, he made got, this film. He got to make his life story, where yeah. he dies in the end. Where he sort of dies in the end, I guess. Uh. Yeah. Uh, just kind of a, a mess all around. Um, I do love it when I can find reviews for these kinds of movies mm -hmm. and tell you what the, what the thoughts were at the time. Because that's what I love about Animation Pilgrimage, is loving trying to get that insight into what people thought about movies at the time of their release. I think that's fascinating. And then seeing how public opinion has changed over the years, you know? Yeah, I guess that's... That is... Yes. Yeah. So, um, here's some of the, the reviews. Uh, Newsweek wrote that the film contained black humor, powerful, grotesque, and peculiar raw beauty. Episodes of violence and sexuality are both explicit and parodies of flesh and born porn, a celebration of urban decay. That review, much like the film itself, I have to ask, what's the point of all that? What, what do you mean? <laughs> Yeah, you're showing that <laughs> you you society... said a whole lot of words and it amounted to nothing. Yeah, it's all a bunch of garbage. Uh, the New York Times review: People who felt that his earlier feature, Fritz the Cat, merely debased a cherished original, can now judge Bakshi's development of his own material. I think that development is as brilliant as anything in recent movies, as brilliant and, in its own improbable way, as lovely and as sad. Was this movie supposed to be sad? I don't know. Uh, Los Angeles Times says, A further leaping step forward in American animation. At that, heavy traffic is in its furious energy uncomfortable to watch, as it is often hilarious. If you say so. Didn't laugh once. No. Um... Chicago Chicago Tribune said, by mixing live action and animation, Bakshi generates a willingness in us to be moved in some aw shucks ways that are corny but feel good. What are you talking about? <laughs> I just feel like these these reviewers are trying like real hard, so hard to say something intelligent about what they think is art, you know. It mm -hmm. just, it, it drips with that kind of feeling, like, wow, this sure was, wow, something, wasn't it, George? Yeah, Jimmy, it really was. Um, Hollywood Reporter called it shocking, outrageous, offensive, sometimes incoherent. There you go, you really hit the nail on the head there. Occasionally unintelligent. However, it is also an authentic work of movie art, and Bakshi is certainly the most creative American animator since Disney. I think he could have stopped at the uh, sometimes incoherent and occasionally unintelligent. <laughs> yeah. Um, the Washington Post was negative, calling the film ostentatiously ugly, with nothing pleasurable or liberating in Bakshi's style of mockery. There. There we go. I like that review. Yeah, that's a pretty good one. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think that's it. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know if there's really anything else to add to that. No, no. Um, oh, there, there is another small thing to add, I guess, is that uh, Steve Krantz was really, really trying hard to get this movie an R rating instead of an X rating, which is what it ended up getting. So I think 
the version of the film we watched is actually a version of it that has some of those scenes edited back in, but also some scenes from this movie end up getting put in like other Bakshi films later on what? or something because like they cut stuff because Krantz was being a control freak and trying to like make it so that it was rated R so it was a little bit more marketable than a rated X film, but it still ended up getting a rated X rating anyways. anyway. So yeah, that's that's interesting. Okay. Anyway, that's it for heavy traffic. Uh, if this is the best back she has to offer, oh god, I'm scared. I don't look forward to like anything else that's coming then. We got a lot of other of his films to watch. Ugh. Cool. Okay. Uh, join us back here next time as we go to. Robin Hood and Little John running through the forest. Yeah, oodle lolly! I'm so excited. Disney, y'all. See y'all then.